Welcome, everybody, to Let's Go Football. My name is S. Fan. I am here with Ryan Shazier, former Pittsburgh Steelers linebacker and Grand Bubera, fellow streamer of mine, GTA RP or speedrunner. And uh, we have a lot to talk about today, actually. Uh, the Chargers last night look legit. Kyler Murray might be MVP. And uh, it's also never too late to make uh, make picks for this next week. So uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, guys. You know, Ryan, I'm Ryan Shazier. I used to. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I'm, I'm Ryan Shazier. I used to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I was a, you know, Ohio State Buckeye and uh, two-time Pro Bowler. All right, there. Yeah, I like. All right, I like the. I like the little graphic right here. Here we go. All right, I'm feeling it. You know, but I was. I was, I was, uh, I was a big shot. I'm not gonna lie. No, I'm, I'm playing around. I was pretty good at. I was pretty good in the NFL, and uh, unfortunately, I got hurt. And now I stream and get to hang out with these guys. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Graham Pooh Bear, um, former running back for the Mount Clemens Chiefs, uh, fifth grade football peewee, um, Toy Bowl MVP, <laughs> uh, speedrunner. Uh, yeah, speedrunner, I play a lot of Mario, play the GTA RP from time to time um, with you. Why do none of our people have arms, by the way? Like, what is it? The no arms, no legs. The no legs is fitting for our streamers, but... <laughs> like, what is, what is up with this, you know? Also, what hat am I wearing? Am I in, like, a, a kangle over there? Is this, like, hey, uh, we actually, we ran out of money. Yeah, we ran yeah, out of hey. money, and we couldn't they afford it. They were going to do a helmet. The model, yeah. <laughs> we couldn't afford it. Hey. <laughs> so, what, is it? what is a professional speedrunner? Uh, I play video games really fast, you know? Like, really, really well and fast. Preferably fast. Well isn't so important, yeah. And, like, we cheat right. the system. We, go, we do whatever we can to, like, oh, you know, so like... Yeah, we, if, if we got to deflate a ball to go fast, that's what we do, you know? <laughs> hey, you're not the only ones. You're not the only yeah. ones. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, and for me, I guess who I am, those of you guys who don't know who I am, uh, my name is s -Fan. I stream a lot of stuff, IRL, variety. I, I used to do a lot of World of Warcraft. Uh, every Saturday, every Saturday, I do a tailgate show. I call it s -Fan's Tailgate Tours, and I go somewhere else all around the country, go to different colleges, go to different games. This uh, upcoming week, we're going to the Pro Bowl, or not the Pro Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, excuse me. So uh, that'll be the, the big rivalry, Texas versus Oklahoma. So, um, so yeah, that's a little bit of who I am. Yeah, I played at SMU for a, a week, and then I got hurt. So nah, I, I, I played for a little bit, and I got hurt, like, right away. And uh, then I worked on staff for two years. So that's my where my football experience comes from. And uh, unfortunately, I am a Cowboys fan. Um, but, yeah, we're, we do have a lot to talk about today, and we want to get you guys involved in chat. So uh, we're going to do all kinds of stuff. We're going to have some polls. We're going to have some overlays on the screen that you guys are going to be able to take part in. And... Um, uh yeah wait actually what's what's your favorite team you're a lions fan aren't you Grandpa? yeah i'm a lions fan i was born into it we don't choose this life you know what i mean it just kind of the life chooses us right there yeah yeah you 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 do you you choose your team like, you uh, no choose man them. no like here's the thing you see i don't you never did i mean i don't know if you ever went to detroit but detroit is just like it is a die hard sports town but we are die hard for our Detroit teams. Like there you're, is you're no, like die there's hard no random Cowboy fan. There's no random Bulls fans. We don't get any Yankees fans in Detroit. Like it is the D, you know, like we all have the D tattooed on us at some point. I got one on my back. Every little, every, literally all of us. We're all the same. We all rock it's just hard. just how it goes. So, okay. so does, the, does, the, does the D stand for like, how good y'all teams are? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a great, yo, man, the, old great. English, the old English D, you know what I mean? <laughs> Tradition of hey. tradition of hope. Tradition so speaking of, hope. of grades, so speaking of grades, Pooh, what what would you grade this play? We're gonna we're gonna show you a play on the screen right here. Yeah, on the screen right now. What would you grade this? What letter grade would you? Are we? Right here? I feel like I, I just I answered the question. Answered the question. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, that's 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 oh obviously a D. God. That's obviously a D. <laughs> oh yeah, that was. I mean, <laughs> the fact that it bounced like directly into the linebacker's hands too. It like couldn't go anywhere else. Like it directly into. I, I, or sorry, that even never even tackled. I, I I've could never, never imagine that happening. I mean, I've seen it like where they're, you know, the quarterback's looking away, it pops over his head, but never just directly off the thigh into a defender's hand. Like he intercepted the snap right there. That that was a legit interception of the snap. Yeah, I mean that was that was that that again? Thing. Yeah, it hits Look him right. It. I think it looks like so. It looks like uh, Jared Goff's coming up. He's he's trying to make a call. He's calling for something, and then the guy just snaps it. So I don't know if he thinks he's I, he's. I don't know what he's thinking. 
Listen, uh, I so mean, between between that and Tucker's that, that's just the, yard that's... field goal, yeah, I mean, this is just, this is like the most Lions things to happen, you know what I mean? No, I'm that's, that's 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 only happened to you in the red zone. Like, that's only happening as a Lions fan in the red that's, zone. That's no, that's definitely, that's, that's definitely Lion football, like you said. Oh, yeah. like, it's, it's more, it's nothing more lion is than that. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I know you probably thought y'all won when Tucker hit that field goal too, because it bounced off. The dude, ball. Like, dude, yeah, I mean you even saw half the half the crowd thought they won. Like half the crowd starts cheering, which just makes it like <laughs> a, such an even more awkward moment. Is that the whole half the dome is going crazy? Like we just won after their you know 19 Bud Light they've had, and in all reality, like Justin Tucker just set a record, uh, dashed our hopes. And I mean, I I said before the season, I was like, I got, I mean, I I personally like. You know, after the Stafford trade, it was looking, you know, we're looking to the future. We got 805 draft picks the next three years. We're, you know, we if we can get another number one next year, that would be wonderful. Uh, we can go ahead and get that franchise QB, which, like, nothing against Joff. I think, you know, Joff is there, and he's going to do what he needs to do. And what Joff? He to do this, yeah. Go- Goff, Joff, Goff, G- Joff. Joff. <laughs> Jay, Jay Goff, dude. Jay Goff. Um, sure. He is he is there. He is there. And um, he is doing what he needs to do, which is lead us to mediocrity. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about Monday night football last night. Chargers had a huge win against the Raiders last night. And uh, the Raiders actually, they, they cut it close. They almost came back. Uh, so... Denver, Vegas, Chargers, they're all three and one in the AFC West. As you can see, Kansas City is two and two. Um, how do you guys feel about that? How'd you guys feel about the game last night? And uh, what do you guys think about the AFC West in general? Based off of based off of what I've seen so far this season, it looks like the, the Chargers are the best team in the AFC mm. West. It looks like the Chargers are the best team in the AFC West. You, you can't doubt the Chiefs. The Chiefs are gonna make the playoffs. The Chiefs are gonna figure things out. But the Raiders, you know, they came in this really high. They had the, you know, high, high-powered offense, mm-hmm. and especially when you play in divisional games, they know who you are. They they understand how to play against you, and they're used to it. Yeah. So I wasn't surprised by this at all. I think it just showed everybody what the Raiders' weaknesses are, and we've seen the Chargers play a, a few teams, and they've been able to do the same thing consistently versus everybody they played. So I think the Chargers, I'm gonna say they're the best team in the AFC, but I but I feel like they're they're a pretty pretty solid team. They're pretty they're gonna be a really, really strong contender in the in the AFC. What what about do you think Denver are are pretenders right now? Especially now that uh Teddy's hurt? I, I yeah, I definitely think they're pretenders and I think the Steelers are gonna beat them this week. Um I just gotta, you know, definitely talk about the Steelers a little bit. But I think the Steelers are gonna be in this week. <laughs> you gotta be no, careful. But, uh, you don't want to talk about them too much, Ryan. You gotta be careful. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, hey, I'm Michael Irvin of the Steelers. He talking about Dallas. I'm talking about the Steelers, baby. Yeah, hey. there you go. <laughs> no, there but, you go. Hey, no, but uh, I think I think uh, I, Denver is good because their defense is good. But the fact that Teddy Bridgewater is hurt, I think it's gonna really hurt their chances this season. Mm, yeah. I mean, that's a problem Denver's had for last few years, really. Uh, I mean, I can't even think of, of when they've had, like, a, a, a solid, good quarterback that they can rely on since Jake Cutler. Did they have anyone since him? It's been a long time where they've had a guy where they're like, oh, he's the guy. Maybe maybe I'm, I'm – yeah, maybe I'm misremembering. Maybe chat. Maybe chat. You guys can tell us. Oh, Manning. You, you, defi- yeah. you definitely oh, have Peyton yeah, Manning. I forgot Manning. Say you. I forgot I'm about to say they definitely have Peyton. So they, so they, 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 they pulled in Manning, and but then since Manning, there hasn't been anybody. Yeah, no, there hasn't so been. They, they yeah. haven't had. You no, know, since their last great quarterback, they won a Super Bowl. You know, in the 2000s. So that's not that long ago. No, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, they have a they have a Super Bowl in the last decade. It's not, but I mean, still, I mean, like you said, they just the quarterback position has been a struggle for them uh, for oh, years and years. And it looked like Bridgewater was kind of right in the ship. It looked like Bridgewater was like it, the team definitely believes in Teddy Bridgewater. Um, which is yeah. probably one of the biggest deals. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Ryan, you can probably speak on that way more than me because, I mean, my Pee Wee quarterback. No, I, you, you definitely, you definitely can see that they believe in him, <clears throat> um, that he's a leader on their team, and then even when you <clears throat> see uh, when they talk about him as a, a teammate, a lot of the players they really trust him and believe in him. Uh, so I, I think it sucks that he's hurt because yeah. he's having a good season, and it's <clears throat> not when it when I'm saying good season, it's not just the numbers; it's just the way that. He's managing the team and helping them yeah. win games because he understands what the defense can do. But uh, Ryan, on that it, point, it's gonna be tough. 
I was going to ask you something. There, a lot of times people look at like a good season and some people look at wins and losses. Some people look at stats. I, I'm the kind of guy who I say like, it's very much a team sport. So there can be a guy who's like putting up numbers and this and that, and they just don't win. But do you like what, like, where do you really, uh, how do you really compare the two? Whenever you look at a guy, let's say a quarterback or uh, in any, any position, right? Offensively, like whenever guys have a really uh, good season. Are you talking about teams? Or are you talking about players? I'm talking about players individually in relation to actually their teams winning. Cause I know like, cause it's like the, the big thing is with like a quarterback conversation, right? Like, you know, with, with, let's say Tony Romo. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, <clears throat> you know, not that I'd be biased or anything, right? Tony Romo obviously yeah. put up numbers and all this stuff, but they, he won a lot of games. They didn't win a Super Bowl. They, they didn't want a lot of games. They didn't want a Super Bowl. So then, like, I feel like he doesn't get the credit he deserves because he just didn't have the team there to to actually finish it. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm just randomly. What, thought of what, what, what do you feel like? They definitely had a team. They just didn't win. Well, I mean, like, it's really it's really, hard, it's, it's really no hard. It's really hard to win. It's pretty rough though. Their own line is pretty really, rough. It, for it's really hard to win a Super Bowl. It's it's really hard to win a Super Bowl. Like. Like, it's extremely hard to win the Super Bowl. No, like, I, I yeah, think no, about I, it. I, I, <laughs> I think about people, it. People, people, they they discredit him because they because he didn't win a Super Bowl. That's what. Well, I, I think about. at the end of the day, like quarterbacks are always to a certain degree going to be judged by Super Bowls the same way star players in the NBA are judged by championships to a certain point. But, but isn't that uh, more dumb. so than other positions? Yeah, more so than other positions. I see. Uh, I think that's dumb. Tony Romo plays in a really rough era of Manning and Brady, where it's just extremely difficult to, you know. Mannings and Brady, um, you know, it was just extremely difficult to even get to the Super Bowl, let alone win one um, in that era. And uh, but with that being said, like, uh, I mean, you're you're always going to judge them to a certain degree by that. But Romo, you know, yeah, Romo's feel- great. Romo's great. Why are we talking about yeah. Tony Romo? Let's yeah. talk about the yeah. AFC West. Man. Well, yeah, yeah. I was just, I was just, I was just giving that, an example. Yeah, giving to me, example. to me, I feel, I feel quarterbacks are overrated. Honestly, mm. I feel like they're the most overrated. Just position. Spoken by a true field. defensive player, you know. You know, and, you know, the reason I say that, right, the reason I say that is Tony, t- not Tony Romo, Tom Brady, right, he wins multiple Super Bowls and everybody say, oh, it's Tom, Tony, Tom, Tom Brady won a Super Bowl. Uh-huh. But think about it. Every time Tom Brady won a Super Bowl, he has had a top five defense. Yeah. You know, and nobody say, oh, that defense won in the Super Bowl. They always say Tom Brady. You know, <laughs> or, you all respect or if you somebody, know. if somebody else, you know, loses a Super Bowl because their defense, they be like, oh, the defense played bad. Like, whoa, like, <laughs> like, you know, it's like, come on, man. Like, give to me, I just feel like they, they always want to put the pressure on somebody or over somebody. And yeah. me personally, I, I just, I think that it's a, t- like, they try to say it's the ultimate team game, but they try to pit everything on one player. And yeah. I'm not a, to me, I'm not a fan of that. But in this nope. division right now, the best quarterback playing in this division right now is Justin Herbert. He's not the best quarterback, but he's the best quarterback playing. So do you, do you think he's in the MVP combo? Uh, yeah, I definitely think he's in the MVP combo. Right now, my MVP yeah. is definitely uh, uh, Kyler, yeah. but he's in the MVP combo. Yeah, for sure. So we did talk about Brady a little bit. Let's move on to the next game, actually. Tom Brady versus New England, uh, or the Bucks versus New England, but the whole story was basically Tom Brady versus New England, which is kind of ridiculous, right? You were talking about putting too much credit on one guy or another. But uh, that was basically like the big highlight of this last weekend. Uh, he set the all-time passing records in the win. What do you guys think about uh, the narrative that he kind of proved he was the reason for the success in New England instead of Bill Belichick? How do you guys feel about that uh, that narrative that was kind of being pushed? I, I mean, I personally hate that particular narrative because, like you said, it does take a team um, to go, and I, I don't I don't like that na- uh, narrative, but I do think that Tom Brady deserved a massive love fest. Like, I, I think he deserved all the praise and admiration coming back. I mean, he played there for 205 years, you know what I mean? Yeah. And won so many Super Bowls. Like, he absolutely, they, I, I, I mean, personally, I think they should have done a little bit more. I think they should have had a, a little bit more moment when he broke Breeze's record. I understand it's a record that just got broken in recent years, so it's not necessarily as hollowed anymore. But I, I think they should have spent more time on that. I think that... He absolutely deserved all of that love fest. I don't think Belichick deserves kind of the the junk he's getting right now. Um, he's saddled with Mac Jones and in a in a transitional squad. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I absolutely 100% think Brady should have got all the love and more. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I think I think Brady definitely deserved all the love. He was in that franchise for almost 20 years. So for somebody to be somewhere for 20 years, he definitely deserved. 
all the love, all the respect because you won six Super Bowls there. You know, you helped them win and they, they didn't win any before. You helped them become the franchise they are now. So I think he deserves all that love. But I also feel people didn't put enough respect on Bill Belichick's name and he basically showed them, hey, I'm Bill Belichick because you've seen that in the game. Tom Brady can't really do anything and Mac Jones really outpaid him. If yeah. You, if you really, if well, he, you really he threw, at it. He threw 19 straight completions at one point. Yeah. I mean, that, he outplayed that was, him. That was great. Well, I mean, well, it, well, go, go ahead. Sorry, I'm going to cut you off. No, 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 no you're fine. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I cut you. Here. You go. Well, I, I was just saying it's, it's one of those things where uh, – a lot of times we talk about it again. It's it's people look at the wins, the losses, but uh, let let's actually con- transition that into Mac Jones a little bit. Mac Jones, he's a guy who played at Alabama. Alabama quarterbacks have a little bit of a uh, reputation for being like the the bus driver type of quarterback, where they they're good at managing the team. They have a strong run game. They got a strong defense. Uh, how do you think that's going to go uh, for Mac Jones for the rest of the year as a, as a rookie quarterback? How do you think you, uh, he's doing? I think he's doing a good job. He's he's managing the team. Like he's he's playing quarterback. I don't I don't see him make any spectacular throws or anything spectacular. He's doing a good job of throwing intermediate to short passes. If he has a long pass, he makes throw it every here and now. But he didn't even have the longest pass of the day on his team. You know, so <laughs> so basically he's a good quarterback and he's doing his job. But the way they set up the system there is basically, hey, manage the game. Do a good job, give it to your playmakers, and we're gonna have a good defense. And the way the Patriots play is they allow other people to make mistakes. And then they capitalize off other people's mistakes. And yeah. as long as he play like that, the Patriots are gonna be fine. They're not this year they might be it might be rough, but if he plays like that throughout his career, he's gonna be cool. I don't I think it's not yeah. Yeah. worry about with him. Well, yeah, a lot of you, people you, forget that that early Tom Brady was exact same way. You know what I mean? Tom Brady was not yeah. throwing 300 yards year two. You know what I mean? He was he was definitely a, like you said a bus driver. You know what I mean? He was he was just kind of moving the team and and did what he needed to do. You know what I mean? It's not until yeah. years and years later that he became the you know. Yeah. God no, absolutely. Be. I mean, Lajar and Chad even says. Mac Jones was copying Brady to the extent of stealing Brady's draft day physique. So, I mean, it, 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 what it was, you know, run that five flat 40. I mean, might as well be an old line out there. So, no, it's it's true. I mean, I, I think sometimes a, a guy comes in and you just have to do your job, right? They say, like, know your role, do your job when you're battle, all that stuff. Uh, you don't need to do more than what your job is. And if you can, then great. You know, and a lot of times your job is to do things that makes other people do their job as best as they can right uh, especially if you're an offensive lineman that's literally your entire job so right uh, <laughs> literally <you know> what? <laughs> yeah yeah exactly let's um let's see this video real quick too we do have a video of uh, what was going on with steve belichick here with 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 uh bill son i mean he's doing a little bit of oh, what this is just that yeah. hair though like <laughs> bro dude that, this is he's a defensive got coordinator hair. yeah <laughs> See, I, 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 I hey, was saying this. I, what is ahead, he doing ahead. right now? Dude, your dad, your dad's, you know, got makes ten million dollars a year, and you got that haircut. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> well, listen, if your dad's Bill Belichick, you know, you got some kind of crazy in in, in, the, in the bloodline. So, <laughs> so there's something going on. What I thought, whenever I first saw it, I thought, you know. The Patriots are, they're known for, for doing a little bit of, you know, um, extracurricular tactics for, for looking at what the other team's doing. They've done this before. I thought it was, they were making signals. I thought he was calling like cover three or something with his face because he was making signals from the sideline. I thought he was calling signals with his face. But uh, what he's cover doing, three, he looks, man under. He looks wild out here. You know what? Here's the thing. Here's the thing about the Patriots coaching staff is you could make up any conspiracy about this and I will believe it. Like straight up, you could say he's sending signals, paying off the ref. He's hollering at a cutie in the stands. It doesn't matter what you say. I will believe it at this point about the Patriots coaching staff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, let's move on to the next game. The next game to talk about, I think, is Cardinals Rams. Cardinals Rams. Uh, Cardinals. They beat the Rams by 17 in LA on Sunday, and they're four and zero now. So they're leading the NFC West. Uh, Kyler Murray is on fire. Do you guys think the uh, do you think the Cardinals are for real? I do. I think yeah. Kyler Murray is the the 
the favorite for MVP this point in the season. I understand there's only four games and it's a lot of football left, but I I, I think Kyler Murray, man, he's playing on another level right now. I know he did this last year as well, but um, I think he has all the talent around him. He has AJ Green, D Hop. He has a nice receiving core. Mm-hmm. He has a good. He has a speed back, a power back, and he can he can oh run. God. He's like a he's like Baby Yoda out there playing football. <laughs> really, like he can just yeah. like t- he's teleporting through 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 the field. Like he just he's, he's doing he's doing some Jedi moves out there because he's really making things happen. And uh, I think their team their team is solid, man. They have a really good team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Who, what do you think? Yeah, right now, right now, I think Arizona is looking like the best team in the league. Uh, Kyler Murray is definitely the leading candidate for MVP four weeks into the season. But I mean, they—it's not just the the teams they beat; it's how they win. I mean, this Rams team uh, that was such a popular preseason Super Bowl pick has come out feeling lights out, and they just put it to them. Uh, mm. You can't forget Week One where they just absolutely stop the Tennessee offense and and stop Derrick Henry. And we've seen since week one, Derrick Henry has proceeded to go off like he normally does, but they just absolutely stopped it. Arizona looks so good. Chandler Jones has, you know, is going to end up with 82 sacks by the end of the season. Like the whole, the whole from offense, defense, Hopkins is playing great. You know what I mean? Like the only thing that can, that can maybe stop them is like, I don't know. Hopkins Hopkins isn't vaccinated, so maybe something happens to him. Like they're like what can stop Arizona right now? Like realistically, like they look so so good at the moment. Yeah. I, I think I think they're absolutely on fire. Um you, you've got you've got Kyler Murray there doing incredible things. Cliff Kingsbury coming from Texas Tech. What the thing that I noticed that they do so well is if you look at their offense, it, it really it it does look almost like a college offense that's adapted to the NFL and Cliff Kingsbury, he played at Texas Tech. He coached at Texas Tech for years. Uh, you know, he's he's from that that Mike Leach, that air raid sort of thing with uh, um, Hal Mummy and, and those guys who who kind of established the air raid offense, trying to do a lot of that quick game passing, get the ball out. Uh, if they if they don't want to beat you vertically, they can beat you horizontally. They can get the ball out to, to uh, slot receivers and stuff, short, quick game. There's a lot of receivers from Texas Tech that had come out in the NFL and, and played just like that, like uh, Wes Welker or Danny Amendola. Um, and yeah, I, I think taking those sorts of offensive uh, schemes and, and philosophies and applying them to what Kyler Murray does, being athletic, being able to run with the football and uh, giving him the opportunity <laughs> yes, to do a lot of run pass option type stuff, I think it's been really, really good. Hey, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Dave is out here crazy. <laughs> Baby yeah. Yoda's crazy. <laughs> <Baby Yoda's laughs> <laughs> Stephon, man, they, man, man, tell us, tell, I remember, I remember you said, man, you had a crazy story about Kyler Murray. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, um, I mentioned this a little bit earlier in the show. I, I used to work at SMU. So, uh, Kyler Murray played at Allen High School. I was at SMU in Dallas, so he's just down the road. And, uh, I, I, I was a part of the, the, like, the video staff, recruiting staff. I did pretty much everything at SMU, but but the main thing I did was like a lot of digital recruiting and, and that kind of stuff. And we recruited Kyler Murray uh, pretty hard early on, and uh, obviously we didn't do a very good job because it didn't. You, you hear this? <laughs> you hear this? First of all, okay. Why in the hell is SMU okay. recruiting Kyler Murray? Y'all were never going to get it. Yo, his like, hometown. You gotta like, try, man. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, if you were, if you're in doubt, no way. You within an arm's reach, you can make a team of you can make an unbelievable college football team of just Dallas talent. Like, there's, there's talented players all around the country. Yeah. How many of those guys did you guys get? Yo, yo, come yeah, on, we got a few of them. We got a few of them here, man. Hey, hey, undefeated five and zero right now. SMU's five and zero. I was about to say SMU's a solid collegiate mm-hmm. program. I think I think we're 24. You must be like a Michigan State fan or something. Yeah, I'm a I'm a Colorado buff, so my Fun. that's I, biased. You're my, from Ohio. Everything's left in the 90s for me. So. <laughs> Man, it, are you like this is crazy? Like the the best player they had in SMU since possibly if they got Kyler Murray is Eric Dickerson. Yeah, like but I mean that's they haven't been, been, been good. good they haven't been that's a good. They haven't been good player. since the Pony Express, and you see how they got him. Y'all almost got. Y'all almost got banned. Like, <laughs> y'all almost got. Oh, hold like, on. Uh, look, I don't know about. I uh, look. I wasn't around then. A lot of people think I'm forty. <laughs> I'm not forty. Okay. I'm like, I'm I'm twenty one. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, so look, listen. 
we we were pretty good. We did we did a pretty good job. Uh, we did try and recruit. But I'm gonna be honest. I think with Kyler, and his uh, honestly his dad. I think Kyler and his dad. They might have just been coming around because they like the attention, honestly. Because you you bring those guys in, you recruit them, and it's like they show up, and it's like, oh, they're the big shots there. So maybe that's all it was. Maybe they just like the attention. So they knew they weren't coming there. But a lot of people, it's crazy because because now we're talking about Kyler Murray being being NFL MVP, and I, I saw this kid in high school. We saw him in college. At one point, he quit. Remember, at one point, he he wasn't even going to play football. Do I remember that right? He went to A and M. Yeah, he was playing baseball. He, he was playing baseball. Yeah, he yeah. wanted to go play baseball at Oklahoma. Then it, it, the whole thing is so strange to me. And at, coming out of high school, a lot of colleges. Oh, and this was the big question with him: Is he even a quarterback? Because that was something else. Because he was going to come to SMU and play quarterback if, if he came to SMU. But, like, Texas wanted him to play safety. He was saying if. Ugh. Like, okay. <laughs> Look, Ryan, just unbelievable, man. Come on. I, I, we had a chance, okay? It was 1%, but we had a chance. <laughs> but, uh, no, the... Uh, and there's you, you didn't really know what he was going to do, right? You didn't know if he was a receiver. You didn't know if he was a... If they were going to play him at corner, safety. Um, so, yeah, it's crazy to see that a guy like that coming out of high school going all around everywhere in college playing different sports now he's he's an, an nfl mvp candidate is kind of wild literally so. anyone anyone who tried to recruit kyler murray to play safety should lose their job if you're if you're a college <laughs> football coach hey i don't know you, if that's and you recruited actually. kyler murray to play safety that's you you should no, we absolutely to lose your job <laughs> you should you should lose you should be fired from your job i'm i'm not someone that wants to advocate for people losing their job but you should not have a job. You guys will college. find out very soon on this show. I am a guy that advocates for people losing their job. So. <laughs> how many, like, seriously, though, like, Ryan, how many How many times do you, have you ever heard that, like, a coach just say something about a player, and you're just like, you are so dumb. You have no idea. Like, remember, they, they, remember, they said, they, remember they said Lamar Jackson is a running back? Oh, my God. He still, he, he does uh, do a lot of running back like S things, but he's, uh, he was an MVP at quarterback, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, let's let's move on a little bit. Let's move on a little bit. Uh, we talked about how good the AFC West is. The NFC West uh, is also really, really good. Uh, which division do you guys think is better from top to bottom, the NFC West or the AFC West? Do we have a, do we have a graphic for that, showing that? Yeah, so we got Arizona at 4 0. We got the Rams at 3 1, Seattle 2 2, San Francisco at 2 2, with uh, Debo Samuel popping off this year. What do you guys I think? I'm going to say the NFC West because I think only San Francisco is a pretender whereas I think I think Vegas and Denver are both pretenders in the AFC West. Where I think I think Kansas City is still the best yeah. team in the AFC. I know they're 2 and 2, but I, I really do think Kansas City is the best team in the AFC. I, the I think Seattle's a pretender. Oh, okay. I think mm. the reason I say that is because they never play defense. Like their defense is horrendous right now. It's crazy like, cuz that's what they're known for like 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, but like yeah. now they're like I don't mean to cut you off, Ryan, but there is a poll running and we do want to get the chat involved. So this, you know, this is a show, right? This is a show that we're doing. It's almost like a podcast style show, but it's also Twitch, right? And what's a big part of Twitch is chat. So uh, we're putting on the content, but you guys are a big part of that content too. So we are running a poll on the screen. So you guys can go to that right now. You can scroll over chat. If you're on your phone, I think you can look at it vertically and it'll show up. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe production can, can help me out with that if I'm wrong. But it's on uh, the right side of your screen, yeah. It's up yeah, you should be good. I just so, want to say my chat is giving a SMU a lot of love right now too. I just want to. Nice, that's good stuff. That that's good to hear. Yeah. That's yeah. good to hear. In my, in my Ryan, chat, they're you. not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but uh, I, the reason I say that I think they're pretenders is because their defense is is really bad. Like you can have a little Giants and they might run for hundred right now. Like and it, like. For them to be an NFL team that you would consider a contender, like they have to really step their defense up if, if they expect to win any serious games. They're good enough because of Russell Wilson, but sometimes offense isn't always the answer. And we've seen that last year in the Super Bowl. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. But And my thing is, though, with Seattle is they score touchdowns. They don't squander their opportunities. They don't have to settle for three often. They score a lot of touchdowns they put the ball in the end zone when they need to um i just feel like i feel like and russell wilson is is still great he's still one of the greatest quarterbacks in the league he can move the ball whenever he wants to um whereas i don't feel like Derek carr can do that and i think last night really showed us that you know what i mean i don't feel like las vegas is 
I just don't feel like Las Vegas has it. I feel like we do this with the Raiders often where we feel like they're going to be something and they just aren't. And and I just don't see it. Uh, their backfield's a little banged up. I just, I don't know what it is. Like, I'm not, I, I this is, this is like not based on statistics. This is one of them hunches right here where I just don't feel like the Raiders are a real team. If the Raiders, they're three and one right now, if they finished uh, five and 12, I would not be surprised. Okay. Who, you said the Raiders? The Raiders, yes, I said that, the Raiders. I know. Five and 12? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Wow. So I, you're I'm, calling I, I John do not Gruden's think job. the Raiders are you're that good. It, I don't it, think. You're no, calling I, for John Gruden's job. I'm, I'm not good. No, John Gruden's got a contract till 2030, man. He if he goes 5 and 12, he's out of there. He ain't he goes going anywhere for a while. No way, man. They, John Gruden. You start off 3-0 and oh and go 5 and 12, you're getting fucked. in the pool. No, he's got, he's got a, his contract lasts for another nine years, doesn't it? He signed like a 12-year deal. They can't this fire him years. yet. It's 10 years. He got like six years left. First year, first year in his new stadium. No, they're, they'll keep they'll keep him at least one more year regardless. But I mean, either way, I just I just don't see the Raiders. And and also than that, like I, I think I don't think this Raiders team is different from Raiders teams in the past. Whereas I I just don't see them having it. Um, Denver, Denver, I actually believe in them a lot more up until that Bridgewater injury. Um, like I said, I think Kansas City and the Chargers are both absolutely legit. Arizona and the LA Rams are absolutely legit. I so that's what it comes down to me. I believe in the Seahawks more than I believe in the Raiders. Ipso facto, I think the NFC West is a better division. All right. Yeah, and uh, it looks like the was that the NFC West uh, is at fifty eight percent. So and the yeah, people agree like with me. Fifty eight percent. So yeah, chat does agree with you. <laughs> yeah, chat does agree with you. That's very interesting. Now here's what we're gonna do, guys. Um, we are gonna take a quick little break here, a quick little three minute break, and when we're back. We are going to have a streamer and Packers quarterback joining us, Kurt Benkert. So he says he's the best Madden Fortnite player in the NFL. So we'll be back in a few minutes. Adams on the post. We're going to put Cobb out here. He's going to run a fade. And then Quez, we're going to, we're probably going to get this to Quez. And we're also going to run Bobby on a hook. So it's either going to, it's going to be off of that left side safety. What does he do? If he stays over there, then I'm going to work to the right. If he, moves to the right at all then we should have Adams and then we want to have the running back on a one of these numbers and we got Quez stealing inside leverage on a corner cleared out to go recap all right welcome back to let's go football they call him the Tony Romo of Madden for a reason Kurt Ben Kurt <laughs> what is up man welcome quarterback of the Green Bay Packers uh, how, how are you doing, doing man? man? We're excited to have you here, dude. All good, man. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, we're going to have some questions for you in chat. You guys are also uh, going to be involved here, like I said before. So if you guys have any questions for Kurt and you guys want us to shout it out, uh, I'll try and do a, do a little bit better job throughout the, the course of this segment to, to be looking at you guys and trying to push some questions to Kurt, because I'm sure you guys have plenty for uh, for Kurt here. But Ryan, who, how, how are you guys doing? Do you guys, uh, do you guys have hey, any questions Kurt. to start us off? What's up, man? Uh, I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like it's, it's pretty, it's pretty nice to meet you, man. You're the first person I ever met with three first names. It's not bad. It's, it's <laughs> tough. Whenever I have to uh, get my first and last name somewhere, people always second guess it. But I'm like, nah, that's it. That's the right name. Yeah, no, but that's, no, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty dope, though, man. I knew, I knew you guys were pretty scared last week when we, when uh, we blocked that field goal. Look, I was just praying. That was the turning point in the game. Like that was yeah. a, that was a ten point swing. Um, yeah. I'm just glad he was offside, man. We had a close one. The week you, what? Like, we gotta we gotta put up the link for that because he definitely was not offside. Oh, oh man, you, I'm just I'm just trusting the refs, man. You know they get it right. Oh my god! Can we pull that up? Oh, <laughs> uh, 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 I love this. Never missed a call. Yo, Kurt, I saw I saw in there you put yourself in over Aaron Rodgers on oh, yeah. on Madden, which which a hey, absolute respect. But how often yeah. do people come in chat and are like asking you like, what the hell are you doing? Not realizing that you're playing as yourself, yeah. you know? Um, well, the first question is like, wait, is that you? And I mean, <laughs> it's people, people lose. And I've, I think I'm like eight and two online with myself. So like, no, nice. I expect it's going to be just like, uh, an easy too. game. So it's, it's fun, man. We get some good laughs out of it and some really good clips for like TikTok and stuff. So it's all good fun. Nice. 
We'll see. Do, well, do you, uh, they're, they're looking at your overall. They're looking at your. They're looking at your yeah. overall. They're looking at your your other ratings. What they yeah. don't see is the the hidden dad rating, the family mm -hmm. man rating. Can, can we show the video? We got the uh, <laughs> we got the family man rating video right here. Can we can we show that video from uh, from Twitter here? Yeah. See, these are the intangibles. Look at that. Oh, oh that's yeah. it, man. That's your that's your daughter, right? Yep. That was what two months ago, just about. Yeah, so she's, cool, uh, she's running around now, man. She's walking, running around, jumping on stuff. It's crazy. That's awesome, man. That, yeah, that's yeah, really, really cool to see. So we, we talked a little bit before the show. We talked uh, we talked about, you know, you're, you're very good at Fortnite, Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. uh, so when it comes to Madden, you're pretty good at Madden. Who do you yeah. think is the best Madden player in the league? From what I'm hearing, it sounds like it's Derwin. Derwin James. Uh, Derwin James. I've, okay. I've, never, I've never played against him or anything, but I know that... There's like a select group of guys that know how to exploit the cheesiness of Madden, and I just I won't stoop to that level, but some guys are good at it. <laughs> you're not gonna have your, you you're say, not gonna put so, your punter in as your quarterback and, no, and never pass. No, 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 I so you just, I can't do it. So you uh, so you're saying that Derby's one of those guys? I mean, if you're gonna be one of the best, you have to be one of those guys. Like if, if you're gonna play mm. against pro players, you have to cheese. There's no other way around. Yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Kurt, you yeah. know your overall in Madden? Do I know it or? What's that? You know it. Yeah, it's it's a 55. It's pretty terrible. What? Okay. What is? What's like the one thing though that you were you're rated low in in Madden that you're you're upset about? I always hear people talk yeah. about their speed. Like, what's the yeah. thing that you really take offense to? Uh, I would say throw on the run. That's like my bread and butter. And <laughs> yeah. the fact that I one I can't throw slants in Madden consistently. I can't throw outs. And then throwing on the run in Madden, like that's the one thing I'm really like I think I'm exceptional at, and I'm crap at it on Madden, so it's pretty frustrating. Dude, how, how tilted yeah, you hear that, yeah? You, yeah, you, you're oh, running dude. a play, you're, you're like rolling out, you might do like bootleg, something like that, yeah. you're trying to throw an out route on the run, and you just like totally whiff. And then you're like, dude. in real life, you know you can do that. Like, You've so been doing it for years. I, t I literally take those clips in Madden, and I chop them up side by side with real life clips, and I post it on TikTok, and I tag EA. And I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, no doubt. <laughs> just trolling EA on that one, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's so yeah. good. That's I'm, okay. I'm, hey, in their, Kurt. I'm in their DMs, dude. Uh, hey, Kurt. Uh, with you guys. Hey, did, hey, so, Kurt, did you see uh, this weekend when, when, when Aaron and Coach Tomlin were smiling at each other? Oh, uh, yes, I did. Yes, uh, I did. Uh, be ready, baby. We get <laughs> Look, Aaron. I, I knew I knew where you were going with this, man. I knew Let's go, baby. Let's Look. go. <laughs> Look, all I can say is I know I know Aaron is really happy where he is right now. And you never know what the future's gonna hold. But yeah. if he's ever not a Packer, I think a team like Pittsburgh, like that's somewhere that you can be like, all right, that's like hopefully he's oh, a yeah. Packer forever. But if he's not, like I think that'd be a cool ass situation for him to go to. But I think I think we that. figured I think we found out this year he's not gonna be a Packer forever. So. And you never know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, mean, you know, I can't know. even go into it. I can't when go into it. Looking like castaway. No, no, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to. You no know, picture in a tough position. I'm just letting you know. Oh, you're good. So next, so next year, hey, it's all your team, Kurt. You know, it's all your so, team. So you're saying for him to trade in the green for the black and just keep the gold? Yeah, I'm cool with that. Hey, as long as he keep the gold and the black, I'm cool with that. You know, Fun. then. Dude, hey, I have no dude, problem. Dude, all I'm gonna say go to is this guy. This, week, guys. this guy has a lot of years left in him. He, no, no, no. Yeah. He's not retiring. He's definitely not retiring. Dude, he, oh, what it, what is crazy. it like though? What is it like getting to like learn from one of the greatest quarterbacks of all Dude, time? Dude, it's right? like, mm. it's honestly like, obviously as a player, like you want to play, but this is one year that I'm like, I hope I don't play at all. I hope he just leads the way, <laughs> take our, take us to a Super Bowl, and, and uh, <laughs> to be in the room and see how like he navigates through the week. Um, it's just crazy, man. Like you get to see so many different things that from watching TV, you wouldn't know. And uh, like, I didn't know that he called our entire two minute drill. Like whenever we like we get plays in the headset, like for two minutes, just take the headset off. It doesn't matter. He's just going to go do his own thing. So it's yeah. like those little details, man, that stuff's so cool to watch. Yeah, I mean, hey, you don't got to comment on this, but it sounds like if, if he had his way, he'd be making all the GM calls and everything here too. If he could. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, you know, you, as, a, hey, as, a, as a bottom barrel guy, you know, I can't say much. Don't, but don't worry should, about that. Yeah. They go to like Green speed. Bay to play with Aaron Rodgers. Remember that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they should have like, the captain and the GM on each side of his jersey. Like, yeah. He's making moves, dude. Yeah, if he had his way, yeah. Hey, so, Kurt, uh, so no, do you do you like do you like Green Bay, man? How's Green Bay? Where are you from? 
Uh, I'm from South Florida, so like I know it's it's about to change real quick up here and get cold, but it's so like it's cheap to live here. It's super simple. Like I went from Atlanta for three years to here, and it's just like like slow paced life. Um, I like it here a lot. My wife likes it here. It's a lot of stuff to do with the baby, so we're just awesome. trying to uh, figure out what we're gonna do when it gets really cold and they can't go outside. So oh, there's a bunch had, of indoor had, stuff. Had you ever no, been Ryan, to Green Bay before being drafted there? Um, I it's went. Such an interesting yeah. town where it's like it, it looks like a rinky dink podunk like name any like any middle American neighborhood and then it's got a yeah. big old stadium right in the middle of Dude, it. Dude, it's you know? we came here in twenty eighteen when I was with the Falcons and it, yeah. it felt like I was driving through that seventies show, like Red Foreman was gonna pop up like out of his <laughs> like Wagoneer or whatever off the side, like and then out of nowhere there's big stadiums there. But like <laughs> it's like what makes Green Bay Green Bay. It's just like an American awesome. town yeah. and then football's at the center of it. It's pretty yeah. cool. So actually, Ryan, you kind of went through the same thing, right? Do I remember right? You're from Florida. So, yeah, from so going from Florida to Ohio State, all of a sudden, you, you had a lot of the same thing that you went through back in the day. Yeah, man. Uh, when I left, so I, I left high school early. So I, I left high school in January. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I went from high school to like the All-American game and then from the All-American game to college. And it, when I left high school, it was 80 degrees. And when I got to Ohio, it was negative 10. <laughs> oh my god dude, yeah so uh look you coming good, up good luck kurt good luck kurt yeah it's we gotta, we've already like started stocking up on parkas and all that other stuff i don't even know oh yeah it seemed like. uh, once, yeah. once you get that grand know about it oh yeah great so uh let's talk a little bit about your stream just for a second yeah uh you joined ghost gaming in february what's what's that about what's how's that yeah so they like compete in a bunch of different um like professional like they do um rocket league and like rainbow six like Mm -hmm. just a bunch of different pro teams so i joined as a content creator and i like take part in tournaments from time to time but just kind of just being able to rep a brand that i like kind of have the same values as and want to produce content for um just kind of break the barrier of like if you like are in sports you can be in gaming too and and t- still take both seriously because i think up until the past few years like if you told people you played video games in your spare time it was like seen as a negative but um trying to just be one of the guys in the forefront of changing that, that yeah. narrative. that's awesome that is that is really really cool so yeah i mean just kind of taking your two hobbies and you're, you've been doing well i mean not just your hobby but your job now right yeah with football and, and with yeah. uh, the streaming and everything so yeah uh yeah no it's it's super super cool to see that um yeah um now we did have we did have one more question for you actually uh yeah. you, we talked a little bit about aaron Rodgers and and kind of how things have been going with him how much whenever you're you know, in practice whatever how much do you actively like work with him as a like if you're a backup quarterback do, mm-hmm. do you do you pick up a lot from him and just try and like piece together every, every little thing you can to kind of like up your own game or how, how does that go yeah, so it's like, it's been just crazy, like playing catch up for the past. I got here in like May, and then he obviously didn't come until the season started, um, like preseason. But like, it, I've just tried to be a sponge, and he's so open, like, he wants you to ask questions. He's not one of the vets that's like trying to hold all this information for himself. I feel like he, pre- he feels pretty secure in uh, who he is and like, <laughs> what he does as a player. So he's an open book, man. And like, if you're not asking him questions, it's kind of like, uh, I feel like it's almost disrespectful. So right, he's been right. really cool and takes the time to like, explain like why he does stuff not just say hey this is how it's done which for me like that's kind of how i learn i need like an explanation and i need to go through it myself so if it's like shifting just like the smallest little details of like weight for certain throws and like i don't know it's it's helped me a lot man i felt like i could actually go out and play more confident than ever um in a new scheme and a new offense with such a short turnaround because of him that's awesome yeah do you guys just like practice like throwing flat-footed and like okay so you just (laughs) yes you just you just be just throwing it like you just you're so like, accurate it's like wow man it's so jordan love and i were the two backups and we'll like he leads the like aaron leads the drills off and we'll just like look at some of the throws and we're just like i can't do that like that's that's like not even <laughs> we can't even replicate that but we try like we try to do our best of our abilities but every like every quarterback as you know ryan has like a different throwing motion his cool. is just like it's just so efficient and he doesn't really need his feet and it just pops out like I don't know. It's it's nuts. Launches it. Yeah, dude. Just I mean, insane. Some of the throws he's made in games, if you were to watch some of the ones he makes in practice, because he's even riskier, is just like this would be on ESPN for the next three days. So it's, mm. it's oh yeah, cool. that's crazy. No doubt. Uh, I, I have a guy. I have a guy, Len Bias. He wants to ask, how good is Devontae Adams? Bias. Dude, I mean, 
That's his name. He run like <laughs> we were we were just talking about bias? it in the game, like, dude. Um oh. is it the real line bias? No, it's <laughs> probably not. I'm that guessing was, not. That was, that was bad joke, bad joke, bad joke. <laughs> um <laughs> But so like, dude, this guy runs. Around, this guy away. runs like the same handful of routes, right? And we were just talking about it in the game. Like he he had a really good move on uh, Joe Hayden on like a little bubble he catches. And everyone oh, talks yeah, about like we throw him a bunch of screens and this and that. But like they're all RPOs. It's like if we have numbers, we're giving it to Devontae. We want Devontae one on one with four yards of space versus running into a heavy box. Like it's just it is what it is. So hmm. he uses the same two moves on the same guys, and it works every single time. And it's just that's just one little bubble route. And then he has these these back shoulders that he can catch. Like this guy is literally always open. Um, the only way to, to stop it is like to literally double cover him tight. Yeah. Like you can't leave any space because then you have a guy like Aaron that's gonna fit it in there. Like it's I don't know. It's a, it's a dangerous duo for obvious reasons. Yeah, that is awesome. Well, you, Kurt, get, get get used to Devonte because Aaron's not going to anymore. So. Oh my God, man! <laughs> I'm gonna hear this probably three more times before this. Show. Okay. I'm just letting you know, hey. Hey, I got to speak into existence, man. Hey, I love Ben, but hey, it seems like Ben's about to retire soon, so we have to plan for the future, and the future is Aaron. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> just, hey, just, just, just marking it down. Like, like, Dude, he's, like, 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 uh, but is a god in real life. Who is that guy that needs their Madden ratings bumps? And well, you can say in the Packers or the league overall. Outside would, yourself. Well, there's, there's, I mean, there's a lot of, I think if you're not a starter in the league, your Madden ratings are probably terrible. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think oh, one yeah. of the guys on our team that we have, we have two receivers that I think deserve a higher rating, uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling and Alan Lazard. And they're like serviceable in Madden, but like, these guys are guys that if they were on other teams would be even more featured players that I think just because they're behind Devontae, like they don't get the respect they deserve. Yeah, 100%. Hey, so here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna take another quick break here. Kurt's gonna join us after the break. Oh my God, where's, where's that span even at? Okay, get, get the picture flag next time. <laughs> hey, these guys, I'm telling you, dude. These, that's why he's the host. That's why he's our leader. He's our quarterback kidding. right here. Unbelievable. Our quarterback. Oh, Welcome back As to Let's Go Football. We had, we had some mix up of the of the pictures and the names a little bit. You'll be freaking kidding me. Welcome back. We're here with uh, Ryan Shazier, IMS Fan TV, and Grand Pooh Bear, joined by our guest for today, Kurt Ben Kurt, quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. And we are going to start off this next segment playing pick six. It's a game that uh, we've come up with where we're going to go fast paced. We're going to ask a lot of questions and we're going to get you guys involved in chat with the poll. There is an on-screen uh, uh, chat widget, whatever overlay thing that uh, you guys are going to be able to start it too. <laughs> so let's get it started. First up, Kurt, your yes. Packers are going to Cincy to play Joe Burrow and the three and one Bengals. <laughs> Who do you like this week? Who's gonna win? Will you give us give us a, a, an honest analysis? Do you think honest? your team that you play on is gonna beat the Cincinnati Bengals? Absolutely. Tough question, but absolutely. Okay, very good. Go to very very good. Very good. And we have a He's poll on the screen. We're gonna be asking chat uh, to see chat what they think. I know right. chat is going to pick the Packers right here. I understand that. But let me lay out why the Bengals are going to win this game. All right. Joe uh, Burrow is the truth. Uh, Joe Mixon is hurt. But Joe Burrow is the absolute truth. Uh, mm. He is coming into his own. He just had that wonder. <laughs> You know, as soon as I was going to say this, he just had that wonderful comeback against the Jaguars, the Urban Meyer coach Jaguars, which maybe isn't as impressive as I want it to be right now. Um, but Joe Burrow is going to come in and make a statement oh win, a God. statement game over Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. this weekend. Well, it's going to be his coming out through. party game. Can, we, you know what can I mean? we clip this as like freezing cold takes for later? <laughs> this is this, this the, the, AF, this the, the AFC North football, football. That, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, I know the Packers. Are, the Packers are. I know. I see. I know this. I gotta. I gotta play. You know. I gotta play heel here on this one against the chat because I uh -huh. knew this was going Packers here. Okay. Good. I mean, we'll Kurt that alone we'll is gonna. Happens. Yeah, it's gonna. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next question. Pick six. It's lightning round. We're going fast. 
the Chiefs are playing the Bills. This is question number two. We're going to have another uh, question on the poll, another another overlay thing pop up for you guys in chat. The, the Chiefs play the Bills this weekend in a rematch of the AFC Championship, and it's going to be a shootout. Who has the best offense in the league? Buffalo, Kansas City, Arizona, or Dallas? Oh. Who, where is this game being played? Oh. Mmm. Play in Kansas City. It's in Kansas City? Yeah, and the poll is up. The poll is up. Buffalo, so. Kansas City, Dallas, or Arizona is the best offense? Mm-hmm. I'm going with I mean, Arizona. I, I personally, I'm, I love the Bills. I, I, I think Stefan Diggs, Josh yeah. Allen. I think Josh Allen is, he does not get nearly enough credit publicly as I think he's, 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 he's way better than people give him credit for. Way better. It was I, the, I don't know, it I don't was know the preseason, the league, but. Stefan, here's the preseason front runner for the MVP. What are you talking about? I, no, I, I think leading up to this year, I don't think he does. Cause, I, cause I, I just, I thought like, uh, maybe, you know what? You're right. This year things are going to change, <laughs> but I do think last year and the year before, I think Josh Allen was way better than he gets credit for way better. No, no, I, I think, I, I think, I think people are starting team, to turn around now. I think people are starting to turn around now when it's like obvious you can't ignore him. but that's yeah. what I thought uh, going into the season. I mean, Buffalo too, they have a running game, which they didn't have last year. Really. Um, Singletary and Moss both look very serviceable. Um, so it, they're very, Eric, I mean, they just saw him put up 40. Really easy. I don't know, man. It's tough. I think I think this is going to be a conversation a for, like, January. Like, if you have to go to Buffalo and play in Buffalo in January, like, that's a Bills team you don't want to have to play. But Yeah, for sure. Like, Cardinals, Cardinals are going to be the more flashy, more explosive, like, fun to watch probably. But I think the Bills are just going to be consistently, like, 30 points a game type team. And right. you do not want to see them in, in Buffalo. Okay. Okay. And the chat says Cardinals win with 33%. Stop fucking up to Ryan Shazir, chat. (laughs) Call call it Mary for MVP. (laughs) Okay. We got the next question coming up here. We have uh, Ravens coach John Harbaugh. He said the team ran, or he called for the team to uh, run for positive yards at the end of the game. Uh, This last week, it was a big story of people saying, oh, is this disrespectful? Whatever. Instead of kneeling, what did he do? He kept running the ball so that they could get another 100 plus yard rushing game. And they tied the record uh, for the most consecutive with, I believe, 43 in uh, in NFL history. 43 games in a row where they've had 100 yards rushing. What do you guys think? Do you guys think they should have kneeled or should they have, uh, did they do the right thing by keep running? So, so, uh, so the poll is in the chat. So football is an unwritten rule in that type of situation. In that type of situation, usually you're supposed to be the ball. But the way I feel and the way things are now in this day and time, do what you want to do. If you can't stop me, then I'm going to do what I want. And that's exactly yeah. what happened. Yep. And that's why they ran the ball. Uh, mm-hmm. It's disrespectful. It's mad disrespectful. But I'm going for the record. If it is me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hurt. Go, go ahead. I'm, I'm, the, I'm in the same boat. I mean, like, if, if you don't want them to have the record on you, then load the box up and stop the run. That's that's my opinion. Mm-hmm. Especially like what, two, three yards away? Like they got a, they ended up with 102 yards rushing. Like, yeah, you, you, you don't do want to do it. Yeah. yeah. Who, what do you think? Uh, I, you know what? I, I am totally okay with this. I'm totally okay with taunting. Bring back taunting, bring back <laughs> cell phone, bring no. back Sharpies. Like, I mean, it, it, I know I'm talking to two, <laughs> two of them right here, but like these are grown ass, men being paid hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars to play football at the end of the day like your disrespect doesn't really matter to me <laughs> yeah I'm like it's just like you got to stop it and, and most of chat yeah. agrees 83 percent say just i mean <laughs> obviously you're gonna go for it you're not gonna let a record like that go away i mean that's like that is a record that is probably not gonna get broken yeah. so no no surprise no surprise there yeah moving on to the next question actually uh, so speaking of the Ravens, Justin Tucker actually hit a 66-yard game-winning field goal two Sundays ago, and uh, Madden went ahead and put him at 99 overall. So uh, this is the question people have been saying: Is should any kicker be a 99 in Madden? And what do you guys think? The question's going to be, or the poll's going to be up in chat. So personally, I'll go ahead and say it. I think too many people look at overall rating. They look at that one rating and they don't look at, you know, the the kick power, the accuracy, the speed, agility. Like the average player, they just look at that one number, right? 
yeah. and they don't think about like, oh, well, it's that at that position. So for me, it's a yes. What do you guys think? I say yes. I think like as far as kick power and stuff, what was it, 66 yarder hit the upright? Like he yeah. should, no, he it, should it, it whatever like his the, power is. The middle. Mm -hmm. Like whatever, like whatever his middle, power is, yeah. as long as that's accurate, you can make him a 99. I don't like, like he's the best yeah. in the game right now distance wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, like like as Stefan said, based off of his position and based off positions, I feel like that's how people should be rated. I don't feel like people should be basically rated off of how they relate with everybody else in the league. And I think Madden does that a lot. And uh, I feel like they should based off of how good you are at your position. And Tucker has been the best at that position for at least 10 years. And they say consistency. He's been the most consistent kicker and probably the, the best kicker of all time when he's all said and done. So yeah. yeah, I think he deserved it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And we got a we got a yes from chat too at 81%. Poo, you agree as well. So we're gonna move yeah. on again to the next question in pick six. Kick's gonna haunt me for <laughs> Yeah, I think I think you don't want to talk about it. Yeah. He just yeah, doesn't want to talk about it. He just says quiet on. yes. Here's the next question. Uh guys, look at this, look at this guy in the field. Ooh, is this gonna be a touchdown or not? Can can this guy, if this guy had a ball in his hands, would this have been a touchdown? Eluding security. Obviously, he's not down by contact. <laughs> by oh my god! He didn't get touched, so he's not down. Oh my god! Would this right here have been a touchdown? <laughs> yes or no? Did he just? Um, I mean, it looks like looks like right here he hits the pylon right there as he goes out. I don't know why he was slowing down. He should have. I mean, I don't know if oh he was preparing for contact. He was right dancing. There. He was dancing. I think he's, yeah. he's pulling at Deshaun Jackson is what he's doing. He's yeah, that's tough. That's, I'm surprised he didn't fumble. So. That's not a touchdown. That's not a touchdown. I mean, I, I don't know. Like the ball, it looks like maybe his hand was out there. Can we can we go back to that? Maybe it looks like the ball uh, the ball might have crossed. But uh, the chat should be, uh, the poll should toe, be up in the chat right like the now. the toes on the line right there. I mean, let's talk about the form, though, of that security guard right there. I mean, wrapped him up, you know, uh, mm. take it, takes his whole body weight, lays it on him right there. That security hey. guard. He knew what he was doing. Why? Yeah. And there is 20 seconds left on the poll here, chat. There's 20 seconds left on the poll. What do you guys think? See, so we have another guest joining us. Kurt, could you go ahead and introduce us yeah, uh, this to is, our new guest here? This is Scout. She really likes streaming. Um, she likes video games, and she thinks it's really cool. And uh, she just woke up from her nap, so she wanted to say hi to Daddy. Oh, so very she, good. Yeah, this is Scout. Hi. Little Hello. Mrs. Ben Kurt. Yep. <laughs> She's a, a ball of energy, that's for sure. I, I can do my my son pops on stream every opportunity he can to. He's two and a half. And yeah, same thing. No same doubt. Thing. Yeah. So, Scout, thank you so sure. much for joining us today. Can you go ahead and let us know what's it like <laughs> being a father who's an NFL quarterback? <laughs> she she thinks it's cool because she all she knows is that she gets toys when she asks for them, and uh, she gets to do whatever she wants, which is, you know, I wish I lived that when I was a yeah, limited you know, amount. Yeah, look at that. Look at the flag. intensity in her eyes. Oh, look at dude, that. She's, that. She's on she's go all, all the time. Look at that. Yes, no doubt. <laughs> when I go, when I go, mommy? That is great. That's, that's, that's part of working from home, right? Yep. Yeah, right. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So, Scout, thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you later. Thank you, Scout. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we got the poll for that. 64% of chat said he was short. The guy did not score a touchdown. Uh, that's what happens offense. when you start showboating. That's what happens. Dang. Yeah, let's look at our next question here. We have uh, one final pick. Would you try to capture an alligator? In a garbage can. That was bizarre. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna default to Ryan Shazir from I Florida here small. on this one. You know what I mean? Because yeah. this is a Florida. Curse from Florida. Thing. Yeah. Curse from Florida. Oh, you're from Florida, Kurt. Yeah, you're from Florida. Sorry. We're both of us are from Florida. Both of you are from Florida. All right. You guys, you guys what part of Florida are you from? Turn? I'm from Fort Lauderdale. I'm from uh, like Cape Coral, Fort Myers on the other coast. Yeah, they have way more alligators over there, so ask him. It is, uh, like that, I wouldn't say that that's the problem. Did you guys see the Kentucky, I think it was Kentucky football team? They played Florida this past week, right? Yeah. With them. Did you see their meme on this? It was even better than this one. It was pretty good. But, um, yeah. yeah, this is Yeah, because they have beat Florida, right? Yeah. I, I'm going to be, uh, you said this is not uncommon. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, when I grew up in Florida, we never did anything close to this, so. I would well, never get close to a gator. I'm not messing with it. It's not uncommon to end up this close. Like I've heard of like people's dogs getting like, like just annihilated. Yeah, like, eaten by gators. Like, yeah, 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 it's you gotta like, 
you know you gotta watch out, especially around like golf courses and stuff. Yeah, yeah your dog just can't be outside chilling. You're not outside. <laughs> yeah, no, no chance. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine I'm thinking about caters. Yeah. But, but don't y'all have lions in Detroit? I mean, they're they're not that dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Next question. Yeah, we had sixty-nine percent of chat said they're good. They don't want to deal with no gators, and uh, that's it for pick six. That is our first ever pick six segment before we let Kurt go. Uh, you you play fantasy, Kurt? Uh, I used to in college a lot. I don't anymore, but I uh, I was actually single-handedly responsible for disbanding a league for winning two years in a row. Really? And they just got yeah. mad about it, and you're like, this, this is dumb. They don't want to play anymore. Yeah. Like, I just, I work the waivers, man. I, th I think good teams have to work the waivers, and, and that was what yeah. I was known for. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, here's what we're going to do. Speaking of working waivers, speaking of the, the incredible decision-making that you've had in the past, uh, we're going to give you some decisions, okay? And uh, we'll uh, we'll see if you can make some of these tough calls, okay? We're going to go through okay. some, some uh, sit or start situations for fantasy, okay? Okay. Okay. So I need your help, but... Yeah, no, I'm 0 4. I'm 0 4 in fantasy. I used to be. I used to be good. I used to be like in. I think three years in a row, I was either one or in the championship. But I, have both I, I need. Players. I need help too. So we yeah, got Trey Lance and Justin Fields. Who do you think it's yeah. is going to be the uh, the guy for this week? So I'm I'm going to take Trey Lance and most of it. Like obviously, I think he came in and played pretty well, right? Like when he had to. So start Trey Lance. I would say you have to start Trey Lance. He, he also really? like that coaching staff, dude. Like they're going to put him in a good position. Um, like, yeah, that's that's a really good scheme to be in. Like, I think a lot of guys can go and find success and he's got the skill set to, to take yeah. it to the next level. I'm listening to you. I'm listening to you. OK, hey, hit me, hit me <laughs> back at, at the end of this week. No. I'm going to say if you're deciding between Trey Lance and Justin Fields, you got issues at the quarterback position right now. <laughs> I, know, I have a, 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 so like, I'm starting. I'm starting Daniel Jones. Trey Lance, and then I have, I have uh, Tannehill and Justin Fields on the bench. Okay. How many yeah. quarterbacks? <laughs> two QB leagues. Two QB leagues. Yeah, we got two QBs. Yeah. Yeah. And and here, here's the thing with Trey Lance, I think, and, and really Fields has this too. But a lot of these quarterbacks coming into the league now, it's they they find a way to get them the ball running, so you end up just like racking up fantasy points, and just just yeah. having like the the dual but, threat option, or you get towards the goal line and they'll just run with it, and they'll just score, get yeah. more points actually. Last you know, week, wow. Justin played a good game last week, but in the red zone, they just didn't throw the ball. Yeah. Like, just throw the ball, please. Just throw it. Just throw it. <laughs> you know, but well, Montgomery, Montgomery's out for five weeks at least right now, so are you they're going to be in a much different position, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely playing Trey Lance. Yeah, yeah and that's what chat says, too. It's close, but chat says 57% for Trey Lance. I love I love Justin, though. I love Justin. Yeah, yeah I, they're I'm, both I'm good. excited I just, for both these guys. Yeah. yeah, I think Trey's in a better situation, personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So here's our next one. Next one up. And actually, we're going to go to Ryan for this one. Mm. Ryan, who this are you This is my fantasy gonna... team, too. This Alan is both Robinson my fantasy team. I started Trey both Lance. of these. I started both of these dudes last week. Look at their points. Look at it. <laughs> yeah. That's tough. See, he had eight <laughs> targets in the last two weeks, and he had 24 the previous two weeks. So CD Lamb right. has been, I mean, it, it's it, it, the volume hasn't really been there. And But Allen Robinson has, I think, 149 total receiving yards this season. So both these guys have kind of been underperforming a little bit recently. What do you uh, What do you think? If you have to start one, I'm going with Ceedee Lamb. I have to go with Ceedee Lamb. I have yeah. to. Like so, the thing so is, I, I love that. Justin Fields, but it's like Matt Nagy does not want him to succeed. Just the way it looks, it doesn't seem like Matt Nagy wants Justin Fields to succeed. And I know, I'm not saying that, that he doesn't want him to succeed, but he's not putting him in an offense that's tailored to fit Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. So with that happening. He's not throwing the ball to Allen Robinson, and with that happening, Allen Robinson is going to the game. So, mm. yeah, Chad agrees. We got 84% for CD Lamb. Look at that, Chad. Wow. Another 16% were Allen Robinson's family. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Moving on to the next one, we have Mike Davis versus Zach Moss. So, uh, I have Mike Davis Moss also. You got, dude, is, it, are we just is this my Ryan? fantasy team? See, okay. Is this my team? Listen, see, Ryan, team. Ryan, you're not supposed to tell him this, but we designed this segment basically to get Chat's opinion and to help Ryan on his fantasy team. <laughs> so we basically <laughs> took his entire roster and just put it right into this thing. So. You, you, gotta, you gotta start Moss. You have to. Yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, that's not like coming from like 
that's not like a salty ex Falcon player either. I just think like <laughs> they're getting the Falcons are finding a way to get Cordero Patterson really, really involved in their run game, pass game, everything. I just don't think the touches are there. And I think against like the Chiefs at the Chiefs, um, not like the best defense right now, I think that's just the play. Yeah, I mean, Zach Moss is in an offense that's scoring, you know, lights out. I mean, sure, he's in a timeshare with Singletary, but I mean, Davis is, like you just said, in a timeshare with Cordell Patterson right now. Cordell Patterson seems like a much more explosive player. Zach Moss has just a lot more potential, uh, not just this game, the rest of the season. Yep. Yeah, I feel like Cordell Patterson, he, I mean, I remember him coming out of college, and, and this guy is just, he, 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 he doesn't play one position. So having having an offense, having a team, a coach that, that goes through and finds a way to uh, creatively get him the ball is is so big. And they're going to keep trying to do that. As long as it's working, they're going to keep trying to do that. Passing it to him, running is, to is, him. I, is Cordell, it working? Cordell's a start if you can start him at the wide receiver position in your league. But is it working, though? Because they're not winning. Uh, that's a fair question. Oh, well, well, they've been with this enough. name since Kurt left. You know what I mean? Like, like just, man, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, big, big influence over here. I, I would just say, like, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go down that road. But I, 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 okay. that road. <laughs> I would say, Zach like, Moss. Yeah. Zach Moss at no, you're good, Kurt. Yeah. yeah, just, just follow Chad on that one. Seventy-two percent. So let's. Uh, let Kurt, Kurt is saying that the Falcons franchise is just like not it right now by his body language i'm just gonna stay away until i'm out of the league and then i'll go back and revisit that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go, go. yeah. great segment here kurt again thank you so much for joining us for our first show it was a pleasure meeting you uh getting yeah. to hang out with you a little bit so um 100 thank you thank you so much for joining us man. thank you and, man it was a lot of fun yeah you, yeah awesome, man. Absolutely. Nice to meet you guys officially. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks so much. So yeah, we gotta we gotta play some Madden sometime for sure. So. Hey, count me in. I only I only have it for PC though. I don't have it on like any of the next gens, but I still uh, I love it. definitely run, especially against you. You said you'd like to play like normal and not cheese. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm all about it. Yeah. Count me in. I'm down. I'm down. Let's do it. So awesome, guys. We're gonna go to break here, and we will come back with some more. Let's go football. We'll see you guys soon. All right, guys, welcome back to more Let's Go Football. I'm here with Ryan Shazier and Grand Pooh Bear. Uh, we have had a great show so far, and we're going to talk about a few more things here. Uh, we are going to do some picks. We're going to do some football picks, and also we are going to uh, we're going to talk about that fifteen dollar graphic that you know we had, we we met, we messed it up a little bit. We talked about it, but we're going to talk about that a little bit and uh, see how people would build their teams. So let's uh, let's go ahead and start with that we can pull that up on the uh, on the screen here okay so this is a team or this is a, a list of players that ryan you played against uh mm -hmm. and and we asked chat to say hey you have 15 dollars take 15 dollars and build your team did you uh, and, and i want to see what you guys kind of thought who who really stands out on this list to you and who for sure uh would you want to have on your team uh one thing one thing i, th I think we need to like, how is Russell Wilson a two? You know, but it's cool. Well, so the way I build my team, the way I build my team is Russell Wilson, Devontae Adams, DeAndre Hopkins, and Derrick Henry. I don't need a fourth player. I mean, a fifth player. You, even, you're just going to play just down gonna... one the whole time? <laughs> just going to play down one? Hey. Just going to play down one the whole time? <laughs> well, cool. Cool. Cool like that. I, I, I like speaking of Russ at two dollars. I, I there's some people like how is Amari Cooper one dollar? That's Travis Shema. I I feel like I feel like Amari Cooper because he, he's not like he, he's not real flashy. You know what I mean? He's not he's not the kind of guy who's like oh he doesn't run like a four two and mm -hmm. he's not. I like, was Des Bryant four dollars. Oh like, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm come on this is Des Bryant Des Bryant it's Des Bryant. Andre Johnson of Des Bryant. Andre Johnson at two dollars is an absolute steal. If Des Bryant's at four dollars, true. He, that is an absolute ridiculous steal. I will say this though, yeah, Andre Johnson. I feel like some of these guys, it's it's like they're not as flashy, so then people kind of discredit them. Like Andre John, I don't I don't think I ever saw Andre Johnson celebrate once. He's like a, a football machine, just goes catches touchdowns and just hits the ball. So yeah, I, I think. Uh, but he man, he's a freak though. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I love Devin Hester as a player, but that's 
That's gonna be a hard five dollars you just spent. Yeah, <laughs> so I, hard. I, I, I'm too broke for that. <laughs> I can't afford. I can't afford five dollars for Devin Hester. I'm broke. I can't. I, I just bought a house. I can't. I can't. <laughs> so, uh, that's a hard five dollars. I love Devin Hester, but hey, man, those, those five dollars gonna hurt your fifteen dollars. Yeah, it's gonna be rough. Um, I mean, in the in the top in the top right there, you know, like I feel like Derrick Henry and Kelsey both like really stand out just at their position but like kelsey for five when i can get jimmy graham for one like prime jimmy graham catching balls from drew Brees. Like, oh yeah yeah i know i know that that's he's what i had I, I, think, I think Brees and, and jimmy graham and amari cooper i mean that's just it's just too too good of a deal yeah so chat I, 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 tell us too what do you guys uh, I, I, I know you heard it hurt you a lot in detroit better. i know you hurt you a lot in detroit but <laughs> jimmy gonna... graham is not better than travis kelsey I'm not saying he's better than Travis Kelsey, but I don't but think Travis $50. Kelsey is five times better than Jimmy Graham. That's not. I do. I do. I'm, I do. Yeah. I so do. like, I, so I, I went straight down. Like I took Henry, I took Derrick Henry, um, Aaron Rodgers, Devonte Adams. Who's my Who's my two dollar guy? Oh, Andre Johnson, and then Jimmy Graham. Two wide receivers, yeah, one mean, running back, one quarterback, one tight. That's kind of similar to uh, Crazy D Lions right there. Yeah. If we can, uh, oh well. I mean, I, we, I guess that ran off real fast, but uh, Samson Paul also said he would take Breeze, Jimmy Graham, Derrick Henry, Andre Johnson, and Devontae Adams. So, what do you guys think about that team? That's a pretty good team. Yeah. We got Derrick Henry, Aaron Rodgers, uh, Gates. Was that Antonio Gates? What Gates was that? Uh, Odell yeah. Beckham Jr. and then Amari Cooper from El. Why did nobody get Eli Manning? Come on, bro. Come on. Hey, Come I mean, I, I, we, some some questions, Ryan, don't need to be answered. Okay. So, <laughs> Amari Cooper, Russ Wilson, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, and Derek Henry from the Dude. Uh, I don't know pr production if you guys can hear that. That's it's uh, there's a little bit of buzzing going on. I'd love so we'll to see Russell next. Wilson throw to Tyreek Hill. I would love to yeah? watch that. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, Travis Kelsey, Devontae Adams, Todd Gurley, and Jimmy Graham for Calamooch. Why nobody got? It's too expensive. He's he got too. Uh, people, people are broke. People are poor. Yeah, they can't pay. They can't afford Tom Brady. Hey, he's a young man. He's a young man. He's still got some years on him. Who knows when Tom Brady's gonna? Actually, I'll be honest. I I don't know if Tom Brady's ever gonna be done. I it's think he goes six more years, man. Like six more years. Dude, I think he out, I think he outlasts like a large crop of current quarterbacks. You know what I mean? I think, dude, he just. He doesn't feel like he's aging. He looks younger than he ever has. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. He's and he's a freak. You know he's like, you know he's one of those insane people that takes care of his body in a in a like a crazy oh, yeah. way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah he's yeah. a freak of nature. Like I I totally I totally see it, man. Him and LeBron are gonna be playing when when my kids have kids. Like, hey, they're who both knows? Be going. At yeah. this point, who knows? Speaking of yeah. taking care of your body, chat. We're gonna go ahead and take care of production real quick. And we will be right back with more Let's Go Football uh, right after this. Welcome back, everybody. We are back with more Let's Go Football. We got some of the issues sorted out. Guys, we're, we're a new show, okay? These things happen. <laughs> um, so we're back with some more Let's Go Football with Ryan Shazier and Grand Pooh Bear. Um, of course, make sure to follow their uh, streams as well. If you guys are new here, make sure to follow the streams. Uh, we are going to do a, another game here. We're going to call this the Pick'em Challenge, okay? And this is going to be for Pooh here. So, the Pick'em Challenge. We've got a whole bunch of games to pick from, and Grand Pooh Bear is going to be the Grand uh, Pickmaster here. Okay. Yes. And we want you in the audience to vote for this too. We want you guys in the audience to vote for this too. But uh, we are going to go ahead and look at all these games I have right here. So, first up, Pooh, you have to pick one side from each of the following categories. So, you're gonna pick a road team to cover against the top tier opponent. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and start it right now, actually. So mm. Cleveland, plus one point at the Chargers, the Detroit Lions, plus seven at Minnesota, or Why Buffalo, plus West three West? at Kansas City. So pick <laughs> one of these. Yeah, you pick one road team to cover against uh, a top flight team in the NFL right now. And Listen. Chad, you guys are out there too, so. 
listen, first of all, um, shout out to our producers for putting Minnesota as a top flight NFL team right there. Um, but as much as I would love to pick the Lions to cover that, and the Lions traditionally are very good against the spread. Um, unfortunately, I can't pick that one. Um, I'm looking at Minnesota to have a big bounce back game at home right there. Um, they have not had the explosive offense that they've had in, in the uh, past season. I'm looking for that to change right there. Cleveland at the Chargers, we talked about how good the Chargers are this year. Not that Cleveland's not bad, but that is just not enough points for me to jump on Cleveland. Now, what I'm looking at is Buffalo plus three at Kansas City, because not only are you getting those points, Buffalo could very well win that game outright. Send Kansas City to two and three. Buffalo is so dang good. I think most people feel like they're the best team in the AFC right now. They're coming off 40 points. They have everything they got Knox at tight end. They got Stefan Diggs, a wide receiver. We talked about we talked about Singletary and Zach Moss as a two-headed running back position. And Josh Allen, who is just playing absolute lights out right now. Kansas City has a lot of question marks. Their defense is, is, is questionable at best. I am taking Buffalo right here as that road dog pick. So I'm going to have to go with Cleveland on this one uh, because the game is already close. And to be honest, the Chargers are a great team. They're one of the better teams in the AFC. But I feel that Cleveland is a better defensive team right now. And I feel like they have enough weapons to to compete with them. So I think this game can go either way. So honestly, I think that's why I'm going to go with Cleveland on this one. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Detroit's playing like dog water right now in uh, Buffalo. Seven. Seven's a tasty spread. Like, don't get me wrong. Seven yeah. is a very tasty spread, but he's he's right. They, yeah. I, yeah. Mean, I can't I can't rock with Detroit. The Buffalo Buffalo is a good one too, but I, I have to go with Cleveland. Okay. Well, it looks like the fans agree with Grand Food Bear. So it looks like Chad <laughs> says that it's gonna be a flaw. I, look, I, I'm I'm a Buffalo guy too. I'm I've I've been I'm, I'm a. I'm a one year plus Bills bandwagon fan, so I, I'm I'm gonna go with Buffalo. I, I think yeah. uh, I think that's gonna be a big one this week. So um, that's my call for this one. Next up, we're going to pick a favorite to uh, cover a big spread. Okay, a big big spread. We've got the Bucks hosting Miami, the Dolphins. We have uh, and that's minus eleven. We got Dallas minus seven and a half against New York, and then. Baltimore minus seven against Indiana. So just uh, real quick to explain to the chat, minus 11 means that you are favored by that much. Yes. Right. That so means it's, it's the a, opposite of what, what's intuitive. So yeah. minus 11 so, means you're supposed to win by 11. So yeah, go ahead. Tampa Bay right there. Exactly. They need to, they need to beat Miami by 12 or more points, which don't get me wrong. I think Tampa Bay is a significantly better team than Miami, but Beating any NFL team by 12 or more points is very difficult to do. I don't care how bad they are. Like, it just is not an easy thing to do. Um, so that's why I can't take the Bucks right here. That, that to me, is the classic betting game of they're working they're working the the casual betters right there on that you know right. what i mean like that that line should be moved more to like a nine eight in my opinion uh dallas 7.5 same thing i mean that's over a touchdown against the giants a divisional game uh danny hey, dimes those games are off. always close yes divisional game giants cowboys are just always close danny dimes is playing great saquon barkley finally is starting to look like saquon barkley again and kenny galladay is due for a breakout game on that squad right there um i just could not take over a touchdown like that maybe if it was a six point spread five point spread i could go with the boys but right here we're looking at lamar jackson and that baltimore mm -hmm. that baltimore team which to me favored by seven is the one that is most likely to cover right there uh baltimore outside of the lions game has looked relatively damn good this season um, and, and, and they even won that Lions game, which they were favored. They were a big favorite in that one too. Um, but uh, th this to me seems like the one. It's it's a Monday night football game. It's late at night. Lamar Jackson loves the lights. Uh, John Harbaugh loves the lights. Like I just feel like that is a better team, top to bottom, than the Colts. They are most likely to win out of these big favorites. Mm, okay. Yeah. Well, Chad, I'm gonna have to go right, against right, both of y'all. Yeah. I'm gonna go against both of y'all, and I'm going with the Dallas Cowboys. Right here, the Dallas Cowboys. We talk about how we talk about how they have possibly one of the best offenses, the best quarterbacks in the league, and y'all said it. Trayvon Diggs is the best corner in the league. That's what Estefan said, right? So I'm going to rock with it, and hey, I like I like the Cowboys over the Giants. Right here. 
Evidence. Well, there we go. And chat agrees with you, Ryan. So chat, 45% of chat says uh, Dallas will cover the spread against Yo, the Yo, this is, so. that's a classic divisional game where a bad team beats a good team in the division. Dude, you never know what's going to happen with those games, especially Cowboys, yeah. Giants. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I, that's the kind of game I, I would not want to touch, just to be completely mm -hmm. honest with you guys. But hey, we'll see what happens. This is our last category, and this is just a straight up. We're going to pick an upset. No points, no weird stuff. Who wins? We got Washington at home against the Saints. We've got San Francisco on the road against Arizona. And we have Denver on the road at Pittsburgh. Who do you guys pick? You know I'm picking. You, you, know, you can't pick Pittsburgh. That's not how this game works. So you can't take Pittsburgh. You would have to take Denver. I'm, I mean, I'm right here. I'm taking Den Denver on the money line. Denver is Denver is a dog that's going to win outright this week. Uh, they're, they're, first of all, the best rapper in the league, uh, Drew Locke, you know, is going to be starting for Denver. We, uh, we, know, we know he's gangster. We know he's ready. Um, granted, he didn't have the best record last year, but I feel like he's going to come in, show up. I don't really feel like this. What I'm going with is the fact that Ben Roethlisberger cannot throw a football farther than I can at this point in his career anymore. All right, I can out throw Ben Roethlisberger. He can go about five. I can throw it about 15. I win. Hey, um, hey, I I, hey I'm, I'm gonna be honest. He beats this. I'm gonna be honest. You cannot continue. Y'all cannot disrespect <laughs> Pittsburgh no longer in this in this show. All I'm saying, is, T.J. Watt is 100% healthy now, and he's ready to go. And, and you're talking about Ben. Have you seen Jameis? Lately, have you seen Jameis? Dude, hey, I I'm telling you that first hey, week. I'm going with Washington. I'm going with Washington. That first Washington, week. Washington, uh, say Chase Young wins the game. Chase Young wins. Mm. And, you know, and McLaurin wins the game. Basically, I'll take that one too. I'd <laughs> <Dude, laughs> I, I, no, I, I mean, I'm, for real though, can we so talk about Jameis for a minute? Because, like, uh, it's, it's, uh, I he, look. He had five touchdowns that first week, and everybody yeah. and their mom was talking about how oh James oh he's oh he's got it he's it's, he's finally figured it out. I'm like bro, no, no. for 184 yards, <laughs> short field. That defense defense gave them those five touchdowns. Okay, y'all playing at Rogers, though. I mean, y'all playing at Rogers. Yeah. It's, it's when you have a short field. <laughs> when you had a short field, I don't know. I, I I think a lot of times it can be misleading, man. It can be misleading. Yeah. So. I, to I, I totally agree on that. And, it's, and the weird thing about Jameis is I thought he could throw for volume. I thought he could throw for yards. I thought the yards would be there. It was the turnovers that wouldn't be there. But it just looks like he can't throw for yards anymore. Um, but in I a different so, way that where Ben can't throw for yards. Like, a much different yeah. way. I just don't feel like the scheme fits him that well, honestly. Yeah. Like, he wants to yeah. throw it down a yard, and they don't really let him. So it doesn't fit him well. Honestly, that's what I think is going on right now. And uh, don't worry, like, you guys hear it now. Ben is going to turn it around and win the game. Okay, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But the chat does not agree with you. The chat says that Denver is going to come into Pittsburgh and, and they're going to beat the Steelers. So, uh, chat says that. We'll see what happens. Come on, chat. I, Ryan, come here's on, something chat. I've noticed. Ryan, Ryan is on, he, he's either he's either going for if he if he has to vote on something, he's either voting for the Steelers or he's voting for Ohio State, and it, there, there ain't no change. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what's happening. You do the period. same thing for SMU. You play uh, here. Well, uh, yeah, but listen, you know, <laughs> no comment. Uh, guys, we're going to take another break right now. Uh, we're going to take our, <laughs> our, our last break. We're going to come back with our final game of the day. Um, so we'll, we'll be right back with more Let's Go Football. Thank you guys so much for joining us. It's been uh, an absolute blast. So and so. I feel bad for all those deep ball wide receivers in Pittsburgh that got to run you know, five yards in. bad for anybody in Detroit right now. <laughs> yeah, so do I, yeah. <laughs> we are almost at the end of the show, so quickly what, we, what we're what we gonna do is we are gonna go through and we're gonna review some of the picks we've made. We're gonna get a graphic on the screen here of uh, what Pooh Bear and the fans have picked, and let's kind of compare the two here. So uh, our picks here were Bills for the Road Dog, and the chat agreed. We had the big favorite with the Ravens, and the chat says the Cowboys. And then for the upset, it's going to be the Broncos. So, uh, was I that mean, two versus three or like hours? Like, I'm guessing the two versus three, like that's how it turned into hours. Okay, I just wanted yeah, to. Yeah, and if and if you're parlaying this, I just <laughs> want to throw this out there. If you are parlaying this um, oh. in a hypothetical world, if you're in gambling's legal, 
Um, I just want to point out that that Ravens game is Monday night, so you would have a chance to hedge your bet if you're two out of three. Just saying, just throwing that out on the parlay for your gamblers out there in a hypothetical world of gambling is really cool. And, uh, just hypothetically, I'm sorry that you all are losing this bet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so hey, it is. Hey, it's cool though. Hey. I hope everybody wins on that Buffalo and Cowboys play. Yeah. I just, unfortunate I just, with that Broncos game. I, I've, I've seen too many. I've seen too many close Cowboys-Giants games to touch that one. Right. I, I do think I do think the Ravens is going to be the guy. I think the Bills is going to be the guy. And then uh, I actually agree with you, Brian. I think uh, I think the, the Washington's going to win their game. So for the for the upset. Uh, man, it's being a speaking of Washington, man. Chase Young is is absolutely – I think Chase Young – we. We, I think we talked about this yesterday. I, I don't remember when we talked about this, but we were talking about best players in the league, and and Aaron Donald came up. I, I think Chase Young has the potential to be that kind of guy. I, I think he's an absolute monster. What do you, what do you guys think? No, I think I think he's gonna be the next. I ain't gonna say Aaron Donald, but I feel like he's, he has like Julius Pepper type of vibe to him. Yeah. Or like a, like I think he's gonna be one of those type of guys just. He's going to be a dominant force throughout his whole career. He might win a defensive player of the year one or two times. Um, I don't know, but I think he's going to be somebody that's going to be consistently considered one of the great players in the NFL while he talk. I mean, while he, while he plays. I'm over here yeah. reading the chat and I said talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's definitely going to be... Yeah, you got a you got a game plan around a guy, and anytime you you got a guy in your squad that you literally have to that can adjust the whole team's game plan, um, he's going to be a massive difference maker. So, yeah, absolutely. And uh, here's what we're going to do, chat for the for the uh, rest of the show. We're going to be doing an ask us anything. So if you guys have any questions, if you guys have any questions in chat, I'll read them out. Uh, make sure to get involved, get in chat. Uh, come talk to us. If you guys are new to Twitch, some of you guys might not even have a Twitch account. So make sure to make a Twitch account and get involved in chat, get involved in the community. So it's not something that a lot of people think about a lot of times. But if, if you're new to Twitch, go ahead and feel free to, to make an account, follow the channel, get involved in chat, and uh, go ahead and ask. So Calamooch has a question for you, Ryan. He says, who's the best smack talker in the league? So what is crazy is when I was playing, people didn't really talk that much smack to me. You know, so... Uh, I definitely heard my teammates talking smack to other players, uh, but people didn't talk much smack to me, but it was crazy. Uh, Phillip Rivers, when he used to talk talk smack, he used to like talk smack, but like not cuss. So like, yeah. he'd be like, <laughs> it's like weird. It's like, like he would, he would say like, uh, it's, it's hard to like really like say what he would say because it's like most people would be like, man, I'm like, I'm gonna like beat your ass or da da da. Are you sorry, yeah. shit or something? And he'd be like, "Man, like that's why you got ran over." Ha ha. And then like walk away or something. We're like what? <laughs> like, <laughs> like he'll do it but not curse at you. And it was just like kind of catch you off guard. But it was, did, like, you, uh, did, did you ever play against somebody who who they didn't like? They didn't say a lot of like. They didn't say a lot of things that were bad, but they said a lot of things that were really like mean. Like they were really good at just like kill shot saying specific things that really got to you or got to anybody else no, that's like that's the type of person i am i'm, I'm more of a oh, I, I don't talk shit i don't talk yeah. shit but like if you start to bother me enough it's like i, I just really go for the low blow and it's like you i don't like, do it on purpose but you, just, like google, you like google you like google them you know what i mean check their wikipedia before <laughs> the game and it's like no nah, like it's definitely been oh, times so i don't really i don't leader in college i'm gonna mention her you know what i mean nah, like no nah, it's like like I don't really do it, but there's definitely been times I thought about, like, like, I'll play a guy, and then, like, if you know he talking shit or something like that, I'm like, all right, man, just tell tell Stephanie, chill out, and then, like, Stephanie would be his sister or something. Oh, like, yo, hold up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, how you know my sister's name? <laughs> <You're right. laughs> yeah, so it's just, like, little stuff like that. It just, like, throws people on fire, like, like, how you know my sister's name? And, like, what are you yeah. doing? Like, it's not, like... Like keep my family out of this. Like keep yeah. my name out of it. Don't talk. Who, about it. Like, don't yeah. talk about who do you think? Who do you think is the best defensive player? I'm Redmond is asking. Who do you? Who do you guys think is the best? The best player, player in the NFL right now is Aaron Donald. Mm. He's been the best. Yeah, player I, I, that's who I, who I got to. I, I love it. It's not. I, it's not even close. Aaron Donald. He's the best player in the NFL, and he's been the best player for like last month. Mm. What, what What do you think? You know, like, he's, yeah, I mean, he's Aaron Donald. Incredible. I mean, yeah. He's, you just like like we were talking about earlier. You have you have to adjust for him. You have to know where he is on the field at all times. You got to put multiple bodies on him, um, 
or he's getting through. And, uh, you know, anytime, anytime one guy can occupy two, uh, that's going to be a problem. Yeah. Last week, I literally said Aaron Donald was the greatest defensive player of all time. So, all time. The best Damn. Wow. Yes. All time. Yes. There's been, a lot of, there's been a lot of players. That's a that's a that's a uh, that's a big big uh, praise. But yeah. it's only it's only it's only been three players. It's only been three players that win Defensive Player of the Year three times. But right? who, 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 who are the other three? Uh, we know. JD Watt, Aaron Donald, and Lawrence Taylor. And Aaron Donald is most likely going to win four. So he probably will actually. Yeah, he probably will. Wow. So so. Here's hey, another question. He from four. Mookie Mallard. Yeah, if he wins four, then it, yeah, it's, it's I mean it's over, right? I mean then he's he's the guy. But uh, Spooky Mallard has a question. This one's brutal. Who's gonna exit the league first, Tom Brady or Zach Wilson at this Yo. point? That, that one hurts Gabe. That one hurts Gabe. That one hurts Gabe. That is too. Gabe's more. a Jets fan. Gabe's yeah. a Jets fan. So that, that's gonna hurt him. Oh. And I'm gonna yeah. have to go. Definitely Zach Wilson. It's definitely <laughs> Zach Wilson. 100%. <laughs> That's cold to ask that, but it's a hundred percent. Is it is it to leave the league or like leave the Jets? Like uh, is the, league, the, whole league, league. the league? Oh man, I, I'm not gonna say that. Like no, I, there's no no shot. I think look, Zach Wilson is gonna be he's gonna be fine. Look, I think like what's I, fine though? Like what's fine? Like Mark Sanchez fine or like he's gonna be fine? Okay, he's gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, I mean, like, okay, let's say, I mean, let's say Zach Wilson, right? Let's, I mean, okay. Peter's out in two years in New York, and he's a backup for how? I mean, how many years do you get to be a yeah, backup I mean, dude, before they yeah, let you go? I mean, if you're good enough, you'll play. You'll play forever. You'll play. Do you think play. Zach Wilson can possibly be uh, Tom Brady's backup? You think he ends up? He ends up behind Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could see it. I, yeah. dude, I don't know, man. I. I and it's not even like I feel like if Zach Wilson if you traded him with with Trey Lance in San Francisco I think he'd be in a much different position but I just think yeah. he, they're the Jets have no they, they have no help no. the Jets are like the, the Jets are like the Lions they're like the Lions yeah I get it that's not even true because the line we got forty two draft picks the next three years like we we yeah. have a lot that we the, can, Jet, the Jets have done that before the, the Jets have done yeah, that yeah the, I don't know, dude. I, I just, you know what I love watching? I love watching the the uh, angry Jets fans compilation of the NFL draft. Have you guys seen that video on YouTube? It's just, it's them yeah. just booing their first round pick. On, it's so bad. Uh, but, so like, if they started cheering for one, they might actually win. They yeah, get maybe. Karma for hating it, on people. It, it's 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 a self fulfilling prophecy. They get yep. well, like. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, really, why'd you draft this guy? But at the same time, it's like, let, let, can we get some support? Come on. Uh, we got another question here. And we only got a couple minutes left, chat. So if you guys want to ask a question, feel free to go ahead and ask a question uh, in chat. GB Belfort asks, who is your favorite rookie that nobody is talking about yet? Do mm. you guys have one? Favorite rookie that it seems like nobody is talking about. I didn't think about that one yet. I mean, if I had one, they'd be talking about them, right? You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> Don't y'all have like a Ricky O'Lyman or something that's doing well right now? The Lions? Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, I'm, we're not going to, we're talking about O'Lyman right now? Is that what we're doing? Like, you know. Is you would be doing well. You just I mean, I, know. You know what? I, I mean, with all due respect, I, I. we do, but I don't know if he's doing well or not. I got to be honest. Like, I have no idea if he's doing well. Like, I, like. <laughs> you know, like he's not Orlando Pace out there just pancake, <laughs> you know, pancaking everybody. Like I don't know what. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to say like as as a sophisticated football fan, like I I knew the ins and outs of every offensive lineman, but I couldn't I could not give you his. Uh, I, I I don't know. Let me. Uh, it's hard for me to say because they talk about Michael Parsons a lot. They talk about uh -huh. they, like the one person I like that's doing well is. Uh, Jamar Chase, but they talk about him a lot, you know. So yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Like, I, I think, I think a lot of people, uh, like, if, if there's a rookie that that is doing well, people are going to talk about him a lot. Like, um, I, and and I, I do think saying Rondell Moore. Rondell Moore, yeah, he's a good one. Has he's he been good doing one. well this year? Arizona. Yeah, like one really big game, and the other one's been like, yeah. yeah. So, so so we got uh we got one final question here. This is going to be our last question of the day, chat. Uh, and this is from Cold Juice. Who do you, each of you think has the best chance at a Super Bowl this year? I'm going to go ahead and start it off. I'm going to say I think the Bills have a shot. 
I think I think the Bills. Are you about to say? What are you about to say? <laughs> yeah, what are you, what are you, what are you, you know who that is? A Pro Bowl jersey, like that's the Steelers. Do you think the Steelers? Steelers jersey? The, the Steelers, right? No, the Steelers are not going to the Super Bowl, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Ryan. No, we're gonna have an intervention with you, okay? We're gonna have an intervention. I'm going to Rams. I'm going to Rams. I'm going to Rams. The Rams, okay. I think the Rams are a good pick. Rams are a really good pick. I think. Uh, I'm I mean, right, right now, I have to go with the best team in the league. That's Arizona. I mean, right now, week four. Arizona. Okay. Yeah. I think. I think all three of those seem good picks. It'll be interesting yeah. to see how how, how, how how it all shakes out. I said. I said. Did the you Bills. say the Bills? Yeah. Not the I, Cowboys. I'm, Guys, uh, it's the best one. chance. Yeah. The question yeah, was the best over the chance. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're gonna skip over the it's Cowboys. Crazy. We're we're, you, we're going to have to start talking about your team. I'm just gonna let you know that we're gonna. Talk no, about look, because if we start talking about them, we're just gonna lose. Okay, that's just how it works. As soon as we start talking about them, it's gonna get bad. So I'm just gonna let it ride out a little bit to the point where I can't do any damage. But uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us for our very first episode of Let's Go Football with Ryan Shazier, former Pittsburgh Steelers linebacker with Grand Pooh Bear uh, and myself, S-Fan TV. We'll be seeing you guys next time. So thank you guys so much. Bye, everybody. Peace.